Hey, what's going on guys? Jay here. And today we're talking about how PDA is affecting literally every area of your life and how the stories you tell yourself are ultimately shaping your reality and dictating your destiny. And I'll make a bold claim here and say that the stories we're talking about today or the things we're talking about today in this video are ultimately the things that are promoting or preventing your success both personally and professionally. And we're not talking about PDA in terms of premarital relations here. So stick with me to the very end and walk you through three step-by-step -step concrete actions you can take starting today to start shaking off your old story, start crafting your own reality, and becoming the person that deserves the success that you're only now dreaming or fantasizing about. So I'll kick us off today with a question from Philosophy 101, and that is, who are you? And the common ones that are first come up will be, your name, um, your marital status, whether you have kids or not, your job description. I'm a father, mother, preacher, teacher, counselor, nephew, niece, whatever it is for you. Listen to the ones that come up and get those out of the way and keep listening for the ones that come after that are really challenging and possibly upsetting, honestly. And this is, I'm a failure because I'm a success because what stories are you identifying with? What labels are coming up for you? And ask yourself, where do these labels come from? Did I choose these labels? Were these given to me either consciously or unconsciously? Was I aware or unaware that these were bestowed upon me? How long have I been carrying these labels? And most importantly, are these labels or are these stories still serving me? With that being said, I want to share one from, from elementary school. And um, as you can probably imagine, huge nerd, right? So in fourth or fifth grade, I was in a spelling bee and I had to spell onomatopoeia, whatever it was, and I couldn't spell it, and I was embarrassed in front of all my friends, and I was kicked out of the spelling bee and had to hang my head down and walk off the stage, down the stairs through the entire crowd, and out the back door. But luckily for me, I didn't identify with, oh, I couldn't spell pinochle or onomatopoeia, so I'm a failure for life. But I talked to people in their 30s and 40s who have had a failure or an embarrassment or an upset in their lives. I failed and I, I dropped the ball for the homecoming football game and still in their 30s and 40s, they still carry that identity and let it affect other areas of their life. I can't find a spouse because I'm a failure. I can't start a business because I'm a failure. I can't put myself out there and even create content or let my voice be heard because I'm a failure. And they end up playing small for their entire lives because of a story that happened to them way back 30 years ago, right? It's insane to think about logically, but emotion is crazy like that. So for me, I've had the, you know, the chapters of like, you know, uh, being poor, being homeless, being in the Navy, uh, the health stuff I dealt with for like a decade, the, the chapter of being a, a student, the chapter of being a backpacker, the chapter of being a tattoo artist, the chapter of being X, Y, and Z. And so for yourself, again, I want to just re repeat this. So I hope you take the time, take five, 10 minutes and sit with it quietly and ask yourself like, what's coming up for me? What are the stories that are coming up for me? Where did I get those and are they still serving me? And why this is so, so important is our acronym of PDA. So going over here to the tablet, we have P, we have D, and we have A. And the first one we're gonna give you is, is P is gonna be your perceptions. So your perception, your perceptions, is gonna be the lens through which you see the world. And your perception or your perceptions ultimately lead, of course, to your decisions, the decisions you make, Again, either consciously or unconsciously lead to the actions. And again, your perceptions, decisions, and actions ultimately dictate your destiny, shape your reality, and equate to the results that you're seeing show up in your life. So the first thing you can do to start shaking this stuff off is unplug. So for me, it's always been like the, the, the most beneficial thing I've ever done is luckily I have a very supporting spouse in Carrie, thanks Carrie, who lets me do these things, right? And so for the past 10, 12 years, I've just completely unplugged and gone overseas where I can't speak the language for an extended period of time. And so I've gone to different countries for you know a week, two weeks, a month or more in some cases, and you've been completely off the grid. And what this does is it short circuits your brain because there's a saying, and it's kind of a mouthful, but I'll, I'll slow it down, is I'm not who I think I am. I'm not who you think I am. I am or I'm being who I think you think I am. So I'm wearing this mask based on subconsciously who I think you want me to be, right? So as an example, like when I go to the office, I'm wearing my office mask. It's not something that's 
going to be some conspiracy theory or something that's like I'm, I'm, I'm faking it or playing a role. So don't let that <laughs> trigger you here. But we're talking about like I'm in worker bee mode and I'm, I'm a good worker and I have this perception and I'm being a certain way around my coworkers and I have a certain environment I'm used to being. I have a certain outfit I put on like I'm in worker bee mode. This is my my mask or my identity of being a worker bee of working in the office. Likewise, I come home and I have a young daughter. I don't really, but for, for sake of conversation, if you go home and you have a young daughter, then you put on your 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 fun daddy mask, right? And you're being this playful, like uh, baby talking, like, oh, little girl, you know, whatever it is. And that's a completely different identity than who you would be in the office. Likewise, I come home and I'm I'm the the loving I'm the loving husband. I'm the supportive spouse. I'm the listener. I'm the caretaker. I'm this identity. It's a different mask that. It's, it seems very benign, but it can be absolutely detrimental to, to, to who you're actually becoming. Once you're away, like let's just take the example of being in a foreign country, not being able to uh, speak a language, like having to figure out like, where can I even find breakfast or lunch? Like, where do I, how do I take this subway? Like, what are there to do? Like your brain short circuits and you go back to like a blank piece of paper and start forming a new reality, forming a new way of interacting with this strange world and figuring out like how to even survive, literally, like, how do I find food? And your brain has the opportunity to, to kind of step back. And especially if you're in like, you know, Japan, Thailand, Vietnam, and you can't speak the language, you're not having this like perception coming in of who you're supposed to be or how you're supposed to interact. And you start getting this internal self-talk and looking at, at the habits and the patterns you've fallen into back at home in your life. And this is important like to kind of lock this in and looking at like once you've taken a step back and start getting like, oh, I've been acting this way for the past few weeks, months, or years, and that's been really detrimental to becoming often this, this entrepreneur or this uh, skiing champion or losing all this weight because my, my patterns of existence have led to the same decisions, the same environment, and the same actions, the same results because of who I've become, either consciously or unconsciously. So being aware of it and locking it in, like while you're still away, we call this grandmaster planning, but taking notes and taking literal actions, putting habits in place that you're going to act on as soon as you get back into home. Human beings are just a collection of habits and of who they've been in the past. So when you have this, this moment of clarity to have a, a blank piece of paper and start dictating, being aware of the, the habits you've been living, start dictating and start making a journal, making habits, signing up for the gym, whatever it is, while you're still away, that way you jump straight into these new habits as soon as you get back home. If you wait a day, two days, three days, you're going to fall back into the same grooves, the same patterns, the same habits, the same routines, and become the same person who you were before you left. I'm getting excited because I get this is so, so important. I get really passionate about this stuff. So unplug. If you can't take a trip overseas, first of all, listen to why that story is why you can't. I promise you, you can. But take a long week in the woods, just go camping, bring no social media, bring no inputs that are going to distract you and keep you locked in the same pattern of existence. Unplug completely, be by yourself, listen to the thoughts that come up. If this is firing off why you can't do it, listen to why that is, throw it over the side and ditch it. Unplug, I promise you it'll change your life. Now, once you've unplugged, you have your new habits in place for when you get back home. Number two, I want to challenge you to give up, <laughs> We're gonna, let's, let's, let's phrase this as surrender your identity. Again, if you're someone who has a perception that eating meat is bad and I'm a vegan, so my action is going to be that I would never eat meat. I can. Uh, there's no benefit to eating meat. I'm on this. We talk about this polarity all the time where the law of polarity is like there's two equal and opposite sides, right? So we have our, our pendulum here. We have our perceived positive side. We have our perceived negative side, and of course we have the variance and the swing between the perceived positive and the perceived negative. So if you have the perception that I'm a vegan, the decision is that I'll, I'll never eat meat again, everyone who eats meats is is, is terrible person and, and whatever, then challenge yourself. Be open-minded enough to give that up for a week. Go eat cheeseburgers for a week. I know you're hearing the story like, I can't do that. I'm not the kind of person who would do that. As a vegan, I can't do that. Give it up for a week, one week. Be open-minded enough to try something else on, try a new perspective and try a new lens and shut the stories down as you're doing it, right? We're testing on new perceptions. While you're doing it, while you're having a carnivore diet for a week, look at the benefits that this type of diet can bring to you to ultimately take you to your end in mind, to, to your ultimate outcome, to the goals you're trying to achieve. How can eating meat, well, I'm doing this for a week, what are the benefits of eating meat? And don't shut it down before your mind has a, a chance to answer. Like be open-minded and listen to your thoughts and see what actually is the benefit of trying this on. Now, the third thing is to be aware of all of this 
is to, I want to say wake up, but let's just listen. And this is so, so challenging. We fall into the habits of being. We fall into our routines. We fall into our environment and let it kind of like pull us along. We float and letting chance dictate our destiny versus crafting it and designing it ourselves. So listen and sit with yourself in total silence at least once or twice a day for like 10, 20 minutes and see what comes up. So listening is being aware of the voice that comes up. Oftentimes we make snap judgments without having to think about it. I mean, we're not even aware of the thoughts that are happening or the thought processes that are happening. Start looking at yourself as like a third person, like rise up and see like, why is my character making these decisions? Can I just try the opposite for today? Like, um, just be aware of it. Like just listening. And I think meditation and sitting with yourself in absolute silence with no inputs coming in whatsoever will make you be aware of this. And you can start going back to number two and surrendering this idea, this uh, identification and looking at the opposite side. So this video is long enough just to kind of recap here. We're looking at how your perceptions, your decisions, and your actions are ultimately shaping your reality and dictating your destiny. And if you've been struggling to become an entrepreneur and to make money, it's because you probably have this perception that making money is bad, that being greedy or accumulating wealth is bad. It's not kind of like either guilt, shame, or uh, perception that's preventing you from becoming the person that deserves to earn that amount of wealth. Being aware of who you are, being aware of the stories you tell yourself and seeing if they're actually serving you. Stop being a victim of your history and being a master of your destiny by dictating your destiny and crafting your own reality versus floating along like most of the people out there do. So that's it. I'm going horse. This video is long enough. Um, please excuse the, the touchy subjects, all that stuff. But again, if you're triggered by this, please take a moment to ask yourself why and listen and see if there's some benefit to the other side of your beliefs. So thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, please like, comment, and share. And uh, let me know what you want to see in the next video. I'll see you next week.